In 2005, I had a very good job as a journalist with a newspaper called The Mail on Sunday. I had a photo above a whole page, which is a bit like being a Hollywood star in media terms. I lived in a house in France with a big garden and a swimming pool and a husband and two children and everything that you could want in Dunya. So why did I do this? Tell me. Why did I walk into my boss's office and say the words, I want to go to Palestine? I don't know. All I know is that I felt as if an, innocent, uh, an invisible hand was propelling me into that office and I had to go. I had to go in the way that sometimes if you're pregnant, you have to eat beans with cheese. I had to go. And my editor, he could have said, don't be ridiculous. You write about London life. You write about living in France. You don't write about the Middle East. Go away. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a plan for you, you can go to the left a bit, you can go to the right a bit, but you're going to reach the same destination that's been written for you. And the only question is how much difficulty you put yourself through to get there. In January 2005, I found myself standing outside Tel Aviv airport with two weeks paid for by my boss to go and report on the um, elections in the West Bank. Now, I knew so little about Palestine that I was standing there thinking, okay, how do I get from Israel to Palestine? I didn't know it was one place, subhanAllah. Man-made lines, by the way, don't count. This is Allah's world. As I was standing there wondering what to do next, a man came over to me and he said, Hi, my name is Jamal, but you can call me Jimmy. I said, hi, Jimmy. He said, I am a taxi driver. So he said he was a taxi driver from Jerusalem. And I got into his car and he was to drive me to Ramallah. Over the next 65 minutes, Jimmy Jamal gave me 65 years of Palestinian history. It's quite a journey. But what I remember about that drive is that when we got into the rolling hills of the Holy Land, the beautiful place that pulls so many billions of people to it from around the world, the place where every rock cries Allah, where every olive and every tree shouts the names of the prophets, I remember being in the car and we were approaching a checkpoint and it was very busy. But on the mountain, on the hillside, was an empty road going in the same direction. So I said to my driver, uh, I know it's my first day here, but can we use that road on the hill because we'll get there quicker? He looked at me like I was crazy. Are you sure you're a journalist because you don't know much about Palestine? I said, I am a journalist. He said, look, that road up there is for Jews only. If I, an Arab Palestinian, take you there, we'll be shot dead in maybe five minutes. Still, you want to try? I said, no. I didn't want to try. One word came into my mind, and it was apartheid. And I don't want to get you guys into trouble, but we do have a right to talk about these things, you know. We have a right of citizens of whatever country we're in to have these debates. And I'm just repeating what I saw. When I arrived at my hotel room in Ramallah that first ever night in the Holy Land, I cried myself to sleep. Why? Because I'd seen one checkpoint and one apartheid road. And every single day of my waking life since I wish that was the only problem that the people of Palestine have.